What's up, YouTube fam? How you guys doing today? It is Clint Lund with London Mex here, back with another video. Today, guys, we are going to be working on the 2018 RMZ 450. Now, uh, we're going to be addressing one of the main problems that all the shootout magazines had with the uh, 18 RMZ, and that is the rear suspension link. Now, uh, after some pretty deep research and, and looking into uh, some manufacturers of uh, making a lowering link. Uh, this isn't a traditional lowering link in the way that you guys would think. Uh, like if you're just too short and you can't swing a leg over a bike, you put a lowering link on. So um, I'm going to bring you through all the reasons, the steps. We're going to get this thing changed. And then at last, we're going to take it out to the track put some time on it and see exactly how much we like it with the new link. Uh, so without further ado, cue the music. All right guys, so as I said in the intro there, we are going to be checking out this right here. It's by Ride Engineering. Um, have to give a big shout out to Adamantic Nap for uh, hooking this up for me. Um, this Ride Engineering link gives you two options. Uh, see if we get the focus on it. Uh, but it's got a five to seven millimeter um, adjustment. Haven't really figured out how to do that yet, but I'm gonna get in the instructions and figure it out. Anyways, so, uh, reasons you might be watching this video right now is because you either have a 2018 RMZ, uh, you might have um, heard the, the problems with the sag issue on these, uh, which pretty much put it out of the shootouts um, because it was just uh, such a horrible rider feedback thing. Uh, but the primary reason um, it lost the shootouts was they had to put... Uh, up to 105, I heard as much as to 115 millimeters of sag into this bike to get it to sit down because now now that I've, I've put about eight hours on it now and uh, so I've ridden it eight times because I put it, each time I go out I try to at least put in an hour, sometimes I go over, um, sometimes I go under, but either way, got eight hours on the bike now and um, I felt it when it was a really, really rough day. There's some good size chop going into a nice rutted inside turn and you would come in and the rear would not settle down coming into the turn. It would actually stay kind of stink bugged up a little high and the front would plant nicely. But then at that point, your the fork angle has gone from, you know, this let's say to this making it extremely twitchy on the steering so what i would do is i'd hit these braking bumps coming into the corner the front end would start to dive down the more i hit these braking bumps and then as soon as i'd get into the rut itself if i made any right or left turn trying to just keep myself in the rut the bike would immediately shoot out of it because of just the steering angle was was so sharp at that point it throw me out of the rut i'd come out of it and I couldn't really get a nice um, contacted feeling inside the turn. So I did some research and looked into uh, what it would take to make this RMZ do what I want it to do and uh, Ride Engineering has the answer. Now there's several companies that make these links all do a great job. I know Pro Circuit has one, I know JGR has one and um, there's probably a few others that I, I can't really remember. But anyways, guys, um, let's go ahead and get this thing open. Love opening new parts. Don't you guys love opening new parts? Especially pretty ones. Now this one here uh, came from RockyMountainATVMC.com. It's just over $200. Um, it's the only one that I saw that offered, it said five to seven. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I don't see any collars to turn it five to seven, um, but uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out as soon as I start putting it on. Anyways, um, they give you some uh, installation instructions from Ride Engineering. So apparently there is a flat washer somewhere in here that I gotta find. 
Um, but anyways, it tells you exactly all the steps you got to do to putting this on. But why would you guys do that when you could just watch my video and then I'll show you how to put it on. Then you can go out and put it on yourself. But um, you guys, they make links for every single bike out there. I mean, every modern bike, shall I say. And um, the fit and finish, well, so far just the finish of this thing is just fantastic. It's all billet, CNC. See if we get the camera to, to like it. But uh, it is one incredible piece of manufacturing. It already comes installed with bearings. So some nice new needle bearings in there. And then also what I would like to do is I would t like to take off the OEM link and put the micrometer on it and see exactly how much different these two links are uh, to see exactly what they did. Um, what I heard is they go a little bit longer. So I would like to see exactly how much longer, uh, get it on the bike, and then take it out to DT1 MX Park and try this thing out. I'm really excited uh, to do this, guys. It's It's been... Um, I don't know how many months since I got, I think I got back in, uh, April or something, but anyways, <clears throat> it's been a hard thing to get used to. Um, they, like I said, they recommend you putting in a, quite a bit of sag into it, like 110, 150 millimeters. And with myself, I'm a big dude and I don't want to take away any shock travel to get my sag. I would love to have my same exact shock travel and, and, you know, just using the link a little bit longer changes the stroke allows it to sit down a little bit more in the back so um, first let's set up the sag scale and see exactly where I'm at and then we'll install the right engineering link and then we'll see what the sags at after that so let's get going guys so here is the setup uh, for checking my sag uh, if you guys haven't seen one of these before this is the slacker uh, digital sag scale it is by Motul, not the oil company, but M O T O O L. So, like Moto Tool, but it's just uh, Motul. Anyways, guys, um, it has a really cool option. Uh, so, you put the anchor up on the fender, you hook it to it, you press uh, the power button, which zeroes it, and then it has this cable that can run up to your bars here, and you can see exactly how many millimeters of sag you are getting. So let's take this off the stand and see what we got. Okay, so first thing you wanna check is your unladen sag. This is how much the bike compresses on its own as soon as you take it off the stand. That's exactly how I have it right now. And I have 40 millimeters of unladen sag. Um, so this is our starting point. So now let me get on it. Okay, so right now, as they recommended, I went up to 115. You have to kind of go plus or minus two or three on the sag scale. So it could possibly be, uh, I'm not letting, I'm kind of holding on to my garage door here. So if I push down, like with my arm, it goes up a little bit. Take my uh, arm off the garage. I'm trying to balance here, keeping my weight on it. Um, so yeah, we're about, say, 114 to 116, and um, it's holding at that number. Uh, I loosened my my uh, spring according to what the magazines were saying, but, you know, it took away my sag length um, on the shock. I'm riding kind of in the mid-stroke, you know, of the shock now, so I took away some of the stroke on the shock doing that. So that's kind of the main purpose of this link is to get my stroke back and maintain a sag number of about 105 is what I want to get to. So um, it's going to help out immensely. I'm excited. So let's get on uh, the um, let's get on the right engineering link and see what we get after this. Okay, now get yourself in a vulnerable position. Grab yourself a 17 millimeter wrench. Only a 17 millimeter wrench. Ugh. And throw your phone around a few times. Let's get this link off. Now, I like to use a little wrench doubler to get it off.
So it'd be nice to kind of go back through my linkage again and check and see if it's still all nice and greased up. I'm excited to try this bike after I get this thing on, man. It's gonna be good. One nut. And if you guys have never done this before, which I'm sure some of you have, to double your wrench, this is the wrench I'm torquing on, you use the box end of the other wrench, you put it through that jaw right there, and then you can push on it to get a little bit more torque because sometimes the wrenches by themselves aren't long enough to get these uh get a good torque value on these nuts so of course you can use a socket wrench if it's long enough i have a torque wrench but i don't think you're supposed to use those in reverse to torque off things so let's get this the rest of the way off sounds like robis is here What's happening, Robus? I'm uh, doing a little video on the link here. Oh, you got the link. I got the link. Awesome. Yeah. Now there's no excuse. No excuse now. I might need a little top tap. Top tap. Oh, drop. Pull that up. Yeah. Or can you lift up on the back fender? Yeah. Oh, back fender? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe not. Push down a little bit, actually. The other way. Oh, there it goes. Back up a little bit more. Go down a little bit. It's just like, there we go. It's good to have a friend around. There's one bolt. The top one, which is also a chain. Behind the chain. No, it's, it is the chain oh, roller. It is the chain roller. Oh, wow. Just like the Hondas. Hondas do the same thing. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Good to see the grease I put on here after I bought it still is on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in the skid plate. Let's see. There we go. All right. Old Link is out. Okay, so just for your giggles here, I wanted to measure out exactly how much different the link is from Ride Engineering. I am going from inside the bearing here to the inside of the collar. And when I put some pressure on it, we're getting about 118, almost, yeah, 119 exactly. Now we'll try it on the stock link, which I can tell just by laying them down. I'll show you guys in a second. It is visibly smaller. So let's tighten this one up. Same thing inside the bearing race to the inside of this. So it's almost a full, if I probably just wiggle, it's probably a full millimeter shorter than the other one. So you guys would be amazed how much one millimeter down here transfers to one millimeter or you know five millimeters in sag i'm uh actually it's like 17 and a half after i readjusted the caliper there so it's about one and a half millimeters so guys this is yeah this is a big difference in when it comes to controlling the length of the shock i'll kind of line these up the best way i can here going by the bearing race so there you can see just how much longer the ride engineering link is than the stock one. Plus, let's let's admit the ride engineering link looks a lot better. So um, this is definitely go faster parts. I don't have any way to, to weigh it. Um, obviously, if you're pretty good with welding, you could probably come in here, cut it, make a little one millimeter piece, weld it back together. But I don't advise you to do that because billet is one solid chunk of aluminum. And it's going to be a lot stronger. And these pull rods links, guys, they go through a lot of pressure when the shock's yanking on these things. So I wouldn't try to wouldn't try to weld fab something like this. Uh, just go straight to the source. 
and and get yourself a link so yeah quite a bit of difference but the real difference is is when i get on the bike and then check my sag number and see exactly how much it changes it should go way up all right guys so i did just get off the phone with ride engineering themselves uh i had to ask because on the packaging here <clears throat> on the back uh it says uh you know link arm blue uh five to seven millimeter now i didn't know what that meant I thought that this was adjustable from five to seven millimeters, what I thought when I ordered it, but it turns out five to seven millimeters is actually what you need to run the fork sag in your triple clamps at. So you need to loosen your two top clamps and, um, and get them to five to seven millimeters of sag in your triple clamps. And he says, and you should see a total drop of five millimeters using this link. So what that will correlate to on my sag scale is about uh see where we're at uh call it 115 to 4 so add another five so we should be around 120 with this new link and then he did tell me specifically to run from 105 to 107 sag with the new links and that is an awesome number that's a number i'm happy with because that definitely gives me a lot more shock length back where i could really really use that uh balance free rear cushion shock to its maximum maximum potency so getting all tongue twisted boys anyways um i'm going to go stab this link on first we got to grease it up they do come um lightly greased um i have some uh stay lube uh this is just red um high temp high impact high pressure grease i forget what it says i think it's high pressure so i'm just gonna put it inside the bearing races here inside these needle bearings um you definitely should do this guys because you don't want to run dry linkage really really no go so make sure and get a little grease on the outside of it just kidding make sure and grease that thing up really good and any excess you have after you put on these caps on the outside just wipe it off with the paper towel or rag whatever you have and you should be ready to go ride let's put this on okay boys we're back on the ground again working our ground game I have to go press the suspension a little bit to get the link in between the skid plate. And I need to go in. Okay, you can let up. I'll hold that in there. And seriously, guys, this is totally something you could do by yourself. You don't have to take it to a mechanic. You don't have to send it into old London Mix here to do it. You, this is something totally simple you could do by yourself. Um, it's uh, really, really simple. So. There we go you have to make sure on the other side of this link arm there's a collar because this linkage bolt doesn't have like a hex head it has um like a box end almost and it locks into a lip on the other side and you have to make sure that this passes that lip and comes all the way in or else you won't be able to uh torque this properly plus you could actually damage the link so be very very careful Look at how beautiful that thing looks, huh, guys? Too bad it's under the bike. You don't see it. That just means I need to do bigger whips. So I can be like, hey, how's my link? I can't, I can't whip. All right, going to finish putting this thing on. Target to uh, specifications. Then we'll check the sag. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, I have my slacker set to zero. 
Let's go ahead and take it off the stand and check our laden sag. All right, as it sits right now, we got about 45 millimeters of free sag. And with my assistant, Robus here, he's helping me. Um, I got my feet off the ground and we're at 121. It was just about bounce around for a second. 124, 130, 126. So I'm gonna go with that. I just bounced pretty hard on it. 126, so we got quite a bit more um, drop out of it, which I'm happy about. Now, just need to adjust the spring and take the forks to five to seven millimeters. Adjust the spring, so I'm at 107 on my sag and we should be ready to go. All right, boys, set my sag, took a few turns, but we got 106 as my sag number. So that's perfect. Um, forks are setting the clamps at five millimeter. So this should be perfect. I'm excited, guys. I'm excited to try it now. All right, guys. Well, the shock link is in. I got my sag number. I got the fork set to the correct levels. I am totally excited to take it out to uh, DT1MX Park tomorrow and try it out. Uh, so be looking for a video coming tomorrow uh, on the review on that link from myself. Uh, Adam Antignap's going with me, and I think Robis probably is going to come out with us too. And uh, it's going to be a hot one, but we need to get the motos in. We got a race at REM this weekend, so uh, we need to get some practice in, and definitely hope that that bike is dialed. I think it will now. I think absolutely this will fix all the problems that I've had with it, with the with the handling in the rear. So, uh, needless to say, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope that was some wisdom for you guys, especially if you have this model. Or if you're looking at getting this model, I recommend it 100% at this point because I just I already know what it's going to do. But uh, be looking out for the review tomorrow and the day moto vlog um, uh, on the day, so tomorrow. Anyways, um, I also have started a new Patreon page, um, so make sure... Drop over to Patreon. I have all kinds of different tiers from $1 up to $100, guys. Uh, each one is, uh, they're all, they offer something really, really great. So, like, one has a free pair of uh, a fix MX grips in it. And um, at a very low, I think, like $5 a month, if you pledge, you get a free pair of MX grips. So, I mean, that's rad. Um also, like uh, the top tier is is you guys get to come over, have a bike to ride, go out to the Antique Naps track, all in the house, and get to ride for a day. So if you're in the California area, or if you're coming this way from all anywhere else in you know in the world, uh, that might be something of interest to you guys. You have a bike to ride, track entries paid, and come out shred the Antique Naps Sand Hill Ranch track, and uh, so. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description to my Patreon page. Make sure you go over there. Check that thing out, guys. Uh, become a Patreon member. Help support the creators that you enjoy. And uh, really, I get some really cool kickbacks on there. Make sure and check it out. And lastly, uh, stay tuned. After this video, there's a little teaser of the next bike build that's coming up. So be ready because this thing is going to be by far the coolest build i think i wouldn't say i've ever done but i'm collaborating with adam Knapp on this one and uh, for his new music video uh, nobody's bike is tight as mine and um uh, yeah so anyways guys without further ado uh kx500 is back there and just waiting to drop it off at powder coating and uh other than that that's it so from the shop garage whatever this is clint london robis with london mx love every single one of you guys uh, make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't done it already. Stay tuned. Watch this little teaser coming up. And I uh, will talk to you guys very soon. Peace out. Project, my bike's too lit going down right now. You guys have no idea, but you will soon, how amazing this bike in a little under a month is what is today the 10th 11th something like that yeah, yeah something like that of june and this bike's got to be ready before july 22nd which is what <laughs> the album drop come on what else is it though come on what number is that oh 722 baby. yeah
So we got a lot of work to do. A lot of companies have jumped on board to help on this. And this is seriously going to be something you guys have never seen before. I don't care if you surf Instagram or what. But this is going to be one of those projects that you will only see once and then you'll probably see a whole bunch of people try to replicate it. Yep. Nobody can make the actual thing. Nope. This is going to be one of those projects where I have so many of my sponsors that um, are going to make us stuff that's so one-off that you're literally not going to be able to buy it. And that's what's going to be so cool about this project, about this video. So stage one, we scrubbed the frame. It's still a little bit dirty. You can see a little bit of stuff on here. Uh, we scrubbed it with a Scotch-Brite pad. We did a little bit of this uh, this uh, aluminum wheel cleaner. You gotta be pretty careful with that stuff though because it can really stain the frame if you don't get it off quick enough. But uh, for the most part, we got all the dirt off. It looks decent. It definitely doesn't look like we want it, but uh, stage one, ready to go. Now we gotta take it down to the shop and get, get going. Yep. Yeah. 